Welcome back to Obscure Gaming, where it's a pretty good time to be a Tokusatsu fan. Kamen Rider X8 is currently knocking it out of the park. We just had the debut of the newest Super Sentai series, Q Ranger, which Saban did something with, and that show is pretty great so far. Outside of Japan, we saw the start of Ninja Steel, a series that, since I saw the source material, the very depressing, predictable source material. I'm just gonna skip all together. And of course, we have a new movie coming up, which I really hope doesn't suck. But to celebrate the wonder that is people in colorful spandex fighting rubber-suited monster people, today in Obscure Gaming, I've rounded up some bootleg and hacked Power Ranger games for you all. And interestingly enough, four of these games are actually numbered 1 through 4, although since none of them are really connected except for the two really bad ones, we'll be going in my own special order, kicking things off with that hit NES game, Power Rangers 3, a game that presents no plot, so I'm going to give you the cliff notes. Rita Repulsa, 10,000 years, she's been set free, time to conquer Earth. Zordon abducts five teenagers with attitude, them being Trini, Billy, Jason, Ken, Bailey, Bail Bailey, otherwise known as Typo Ranger, and of course, Zack. And as a ranger, it's your job to put a stop to Rita's evil plans, even though she's not at all in this game. To start, you pick your ranger of choice, and if you have a hard time deciding, don't worry because they all control pretty much the same. And you set off on a magical beat em up style journey, in the spirits of something like Final Fight, only less good. As whoever you selected, you'll have to use every weapon in your arsenal, aka the only one you're given, which you'll use to whack enemies until they die. Luckily enough though, you won't have to focus on running around a stage to find those enemies as they all come to you. In fact, interestingly enough, each stage in the game consists of one screen, as opposed to other beat-em-ups where you would, you know, walk around the stage and collect things and beat people up. In this game, you just stand in this one spot and let danger come to you. And it will! in the form of miscolored putties. It's around this time when I realized that this game is just a really bad ripoff of Natsume's vastly superior Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game for the SNES. But since ripping other things off is this segment's forte, I just kind of went with it. Now, after dispatching of every putty who had the misfortune of walking onto that one screen you have, you'll fight one of many not memorable bosses from Power Rangers. This first guy I think I vaguely remember from the Genesis fighting game and maybe the show. Well, most of the other bosses kind of leave me at a loss. Despite this, by utilizing the tried and true method of standing in one spot and mashing the A button, both putties and bosses will fall before you. And yes, you can just stand in one spot and mash A and win. For example, while playing the game one night, my heater kicked on and it got a little warm. I couldn't pause the game because that would make too much sense, so I mashed A with one button and hand and opened the window with my other hand. And when I sat back down, victory was mine. What could be the greatest boss fight of them all, though, is of course your Megazord, which you're obviously taller than, and upon completing the game it says, Congratulations! Hey, congrats! You just wasted about 18 minutes, way to go. But Yuri of Wind, maybe you're just being too hard on it. Surely the visuals and music make up for the gameplay shortcomings, to which I say no they don't, and no again. The visuals are just a watered-down version of Natsume's game, while the music is not at all indicative of Power Rangers. These lackluster elements, mixed with the lackluster everything else in the game, allows me to safely say you can go ahead and skip this one, and just play the official game for the Super Nintendo instead, as it's a fantastic game and deserves your love. Next up, we have the game that started it all, simply known as Power Rangers for the NES, 
a quote unquote hack of another game called Shoujin Sentai Jetman, the Super Sentai series that aired before Zhu Ranger, Zhu Ranger being the source material for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And as you can see by this title screen, they did an amazing job of hacking the title. They erased the original logo and wrote Power Rangers there instead. MS Paint is truly a magical program. And that is all the hacking that they did to the game. Lucky for them, most of the rest of the game is already in English. Now Jetman, or Power Rangers, is a side-scrolling action game, somewhat reminiscent of Mega Man in the sense that you can tackle the stages in any order that you want. The game gives you five characters to choose from. Red Hawk, Blue Swallow, Yellow Owl, White Swan, and Black Condor. Red and black both use a sword, blue and white slash pink both make use of blasters, while yellow uses a dinky close range weapon that I don't like so I never use him. Between blades and guns though, you should be able to find a playstyle that fits your needs. And upon selecting your character, you set off to stop the evil forces of Viram by killing everything in sight until you get to the rocky end of the stage, at which point you'll unfortunately not do battle with the main monster of the level on foot, as the on foot gameplay is really the highlight of the whole game. Instead, resorting to getting inside your mech for some good old fashioned awkward boss battles. It would be less awkward if this portion of the game was better designed, but what are you gonna do I guess? Of course, as a giant robot, you have many abilities at your disposal such as punching, and blocking, and jumping, and that's it. With each boss fight essentially being, hey, figure out my pattern and then punch me until I die. You'll do this across five stages until you get to the final stage whose boss I can't fucking stand because he killed me a lot. But after dying a bunch, he'll finally be thwarted and you'll be rewarded with a save the earth. Thank you, Jetman. And you, the player I assume, and then credits. The game features some very nice visuals as well as some fantastic music which you've been hearing in the background during this portion of the video. All things considered, despite not being a proper bootleg, it's actually a lot of fun and a game I'd highly recommend if you're at all interested in an easy but very satisfying action game for the NES. Next on the bootleg list, we have that unforgettable classic game, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie 4, a game that's clearly a sequel to the new Lionsgate film, which means it's obviously from the future. So it's good to know that the film did so well, enough to warrant its own bootleg at least, but unlike Power Rangers 3, Power Rangers The Movie 4 kicks things up a notch by adding not one, but five additional rangers. And by five additional rangers, I mean they copied the first five rangers and then pasted another five on the bottom row. Truly, they are master programmers. Upon choosing a character from the wide variety of choices you're given, you then begin your journey in what's essentially a beat-em-up style game, like Streets of Rage, except not good. But wait, Yuri of Wen, Something about this doesn't seem right and slash familiar, and yeah, the creators of Power Rangers 3 opted to instead of making a new game and ripping off some other developer's Power Ranger beat em up, to just rip off their own game slash Natsume's game again and make the same fucking game. Though to be fair, it's not exactly the same fucking game as they added one feature their previous title lacked and didn't need, which was a boss rush at the end of the game where you will fight all the bosses and then the game says congratulations, hey this time you wasted 27 minutes, congrats! Luckily you can make use of all the tactics you used in Power Rangers 3, such as standing in one place and hitting A over and over again, so at least the learning curve is low. As for everything else, it's the same fucking game with the same stages and graphics and monsters and music and rangers and the other set of the same rangers. Uh, so again, go ahead and skip this game and just play that official game from Natsume. It's a real game 
and it's well made and it's fun and it's not this game. Next up, we have another master hack job from the people who brought you Power Rangers. It's Power Rangers 2, or two Power Rangers, depending on how you want to look at things, or Kyoryu Sentai Zhu Ranger, if you want to use its actual name. The season of Super Sentai, whose stock footage would go on to become Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, had its very own NES game in Japan. And while I admittedly haven't seen a ton of Zhu Ranger, I was real excited to play this game in hacked English, so of course they didn't actually hack translate anything in the game, you bastards. Uh, luckily, someone did actually translate this title into English, and that's available out there somewhere if you feel like tracking it down. As for me, I like going in blind. Now, the format of this game is different from its predecessor, Jetman, allowing no character selection on your part, with you simply playing through each stage as a certain member of the team, in what's a fairly simple platforming action game. Each level starts off relatively similar, with whatever color member of the team you ended up starting off with, and their dinky blaster weapon, which has horrible range. Using this, you'll destroy all enemies in your path, as well as collect coins. Collecting them all will show you a picture of that ranger's mech, as if to say, Hey, I know what that is. At around the midpoint of each stage, you'll find a door. Inside, you'll run into this guy, who, while I may not know his name or what he's saying, must be articulating something along the lines of, Why are you running around with your really crappy blaster thing? Here, why don't you take your actual weapon instead? And from there, you get to play through the rest of the stage using your real weapon. That really, you should have just started off to begin with. At the end of the stage, you'll fight a boss whose pattern you'll have to figure out and then kill them before moving on to the next color of the team. But platforming and action aren't the only things that stand in your way, as the game also features multiple choice questions, which if there's anything I love, it's multiple choice questions in a language that I don't understand in written form, as well as one quote unquote Megazord mech type battle that's easily one of the lamest things I've ever seen, as instead of an actual fight, uh, the game turns into this odd game of catch where the monster will throw a bomb at you, and you'll need to catch the bomb and then throw it back, with the objective being to have it land on the enemy's side without them catching it, uh, so it'll blow up and then they'll die. Which, having not seen the Sentai, um, now available from Shout Factory, by the way, I'm pretty sure that didn't happen in the show, and if it did, I'm pretty sure that was a lame episode. In the last stage, you'll take control of Geki, or Red, and take down Rita Repulsa's Japanese equivalent. And then the game ends. All in all, I like Jetman better. On the upside, the visuals are fairly nice. Perhaps a tad cartoonish, if that's the right word to use. But still pretty nice. With music that is sufficient. Though, nothing to write home about, except for the theme song, which you've been listening to during this whole section. Overall, Kyoryu Sentai Zhu Ranger, or Two Power Rangers, for the NES is unfortunately an underwhelming title that, while not bad, isn't really something I'd start throwing out recommendations for. Though I have played far worse, such as the bootlegs in this video. So there's that, I guess. Speaking of which, that brings us to our final title slash bootleg, and what better way to end this video by ripping off Natsume yet again with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Fighting Edition for the Sega Genesis, a bootleg port of an SNES game that not only is one of the best Power Ranger games, but easily the best Power Rangers fighting game ever made. Now, of course, since the SNES made use of four buttons for its combat, and since the Genesis controller only has three buttons, some compromises had to be made. 
as in they took away two of your attacks even though they could have kept one of them, replaced one of those attacks with a block button that only works some of the time, and then smush the four other attack buttons into just two buttons, which works about as well as you'd expect it does. Gameplay is extremely watered down, with most of your attacks being shoved into just two buttons, it makes fights a mess, where your best option for survival is to simply mash buttons. It's not like you can rely on anti-air attacks anymore, or jump attacks, or hell, even throws. The gameplay is so clunky that it's honestly a little depressing, especially considering the godly game that it's ripping off. Sadness aside, the game does manage to fit all of the characters from the original title into this game, as well as all the stages, even if everything is slightly colored wrong. And I'm colorblind, so the fact that I can notice that means you screwed something up. That said, visuals aren't that bad. Not as good as they were on the Super Nintendo, but still pretty good, all things considered. The music and sound effects, on the other hand, is a whole other story. And by all means, have a listen. It sounds tinny as fuck. I know people like to shit on the Genesis for not having as good as a sound chip uh, as the Super Nintendo, but the Genesis is capable of a lot better than this. Go play Moonwalker and then be amazed by what you can do when you put your heart into it. Overall, this port is just a waste of time and depressing and... Just do yourself a favor and support Natsume and go play the official game that they made and just ignore this altogether. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. But that was our bootleg Power Ranger party. All things considered, uh, the best games out of all five here were the official ones, while the bootlegs just make their official counterparts look that much better. And they were already pretty amazing. Uh, so if you've never played Jetman, Natsume's Gems, or hell, even that Ranger game, go check those out and have a good time. As for everything else, no. This has been Obscure Gaming. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to End Slate, where it's been so long since we've danced this dance. It's been, what, maybe 15 hours or something like that? I missed you. My chair just squeaked. But it's time for end slate. Like I've never end slated before. So let's get down to business. Uh, first thing on end slate I'd like to end slate is at the top of the end slate. You'll notice there are three end sl uh, uh Sorry, I said that wrong. Three videos, actually, when I speak correctly, uh, that you can click on if you want. One of them will be the... Will be the English speaking talking words. Uh, the newest video I did on this channel, which was a gaming mysteries in the beta of Kirby Air Ride, which I uploaded yesterday. And then the other two videos are going to be these two other videos that at one point in time I made, and you can click on them if you want. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see social media. Uh, I have a Twitter and a Facebook and a Twitch and a Patreon. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, and then Nico. You can't forget Nico. He, everyone knows this, but Nico. Nico does the art. So, if you like art, you should check out Nico, because Nico, he does the art, as well as logos, and the art. And then, of course, if you like the video and you want to subscribe or share or like or any of those things, it's greatly appreciated, though I never force that upon uh, any of you. And now to do something I didn't do yesterday because it was a shorter video and that's to thank the wonderful people who support me on Patreon by thanking them out loud with names. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, Ben Shaw, Darth Penguin, Nikki Batelli, Leia B547, Brian, Zet, 
the legendary hero. Is that a Tokusatsu thing? It might be. Joshua Young. He, he, ho. Grace. Brendan Wilbanks. JJ Rutan. Shulks Monado. I'm feeling it. Abdul Kareem Torres. Nikki Layman. Sally from Three Ice Cube Show. D Man's Land. What's up? Jacob Sifford. Ryan Macklin. Paul Walker. Tio Centore. Joseph Pueyo. Boltron. Skyward Keyblade. Joseph Constantine. Nolan North. I always want to say North. It's not North, though. I'm sorry. Christina Coleman. Doc Drazen. Andrew Arana. Aaron Brewington. David Friesley. Fernando Silva. Rodrigo Derez. Brandon Alexander Cohen. Beautiful Yoshi. Steven Seferance. Wade Tamaro. Ohio. Ohio. Breezy. Ohio. Beezy. Yes. That's, if I said that wrong, I apologize. Richard Lahif, Greg Wool. I almost said Wolf. Vicious Phantom, Mr. Bowler. No one can stop Mr. Bowler or Mr. Domino. Robert Brian McKinnon. Yep, that's right. Mitchell Jandon, Sergio Diego Martinez, Carnet, Car... Kara Zuna, M Gamers, Mio Kurushima, J Steria, Matt Jonas, Rory O'Carroll, Matt Metsy Makers, Kempachi Ramasama, Lon Lon Rancher Smith, Anthony Mang, Squiggly Kip, Crow Feathers, Fat D. Always showing up. Never know when he's gonna not show up. Alex Rowley, Kelsey Lowensbury. Lucas Basque, Eric Camacho, Jonathan Klaus, Shay Montgomery, Joseph Hitsky, Ryan Cole, Jacob Epler, Tom, the Total Sonic fan, River Casey, and Joel Guzman. And of course, thank you everyone else who supports me on Patreon as well. Um, the fact that you do this means the world to me. And as I said yesterday, uh, it's something I don't think I'd ever be able to properly express. Uh, but much thank yous and much love to all of you. Um, thank you. Uh, next time on End Slate, it's going to be a different video than this one. And it'll have an End Slate. Not during the video, though. So, you know, no, no confusion there. But... I'll see you next time on Ensley. I love you, still.